my Zadie would say, when I would sit on the floor playing for hours with a set of Legos. Don't bother him. He's becoming. Now, I've been becoming for as long as I can remember. As a child, when my older brother would build a complicated, traditional-looking bridge out of Legos, I'd wreck it just to see how the individual parts fit together to create something I'd never seen before. I was a serial deconstructor. <laughs> so what is it about Legos? It's not that I wanted to build a better bridge or become an engineer. It was the recognition that out of a number of very basic shapes, I could create a diverse and innovative array of structures, limited only by my vision. I learned something about myself and this love of parts. The concept of deconstruction for the sole purpose of finding out how parts work is not valuable unless you can make them become something greater. I began to wonder, could other kinds of big picture problems, social, educational, be resolved with a similar mindset? Later, when I learned about the devastating educational deficits in Africa, I wanted to be part of a solution. Now, this was not a thunder and lightning moment for me. My family background is steeped in sadaka, the giving of charity, and the belief that every one of us has a role in healing the world. At the end of each week, my brother and I would put a few dollars into a sadaka box that was silver, metal, and scratched, in need of repair, just like the children from the charities we were serving. Inscribed on the metal was a quote from the Talmud, Sanhedrin 4.5, whoever saves a life, it is considered as if he saved an entire world. Wow to become that person who could save a life. This was the box my Zadie used to put away a few dollars for the veterans returning from World War II, because he was always so grateful to have made it home alive. The box he gave my mom at her bat mitzvah to save her dollars for the synagogue's children's choir. And now the box my brother and I used to save our donations for our chosen children's charities. At the end of each month, we'd be allowed to write a check. And sending that little check made us feel like citizens of the world. Look, Zadie, I'd say, holding my check in the air like a trophy. This will save some lives this month. Look, Zadie said, how you're becoming. What I've become is a writer and a filmmaker. So I think about things in frames and panels. I'm also a dedicated student with a particular stance on education, that the traditional methods of teaching and delivering education should be different for children with different learning styles. So when I learned about a global crisis in education, I was deeply moved and set about finding my role in healing the world the best way I could. This philosophy eventually led to my deconstructing traditional science, math, hygiene, even social curricula on children's issues like bullying and staying in school, and presenting these subjects through animated film curricula. Hello, I'm Mr. Leibowitz. This is Hattie, and this is Finney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Today, we're going to learn math. No, no, Finney, not bath. Math, you know, like numbers. Sheesh. Help. <laughs> Hygiene videos? I am the Flossinator. <laughs> I'm here to floss you up. And comic books. And packaging them into an organization called Alex Animated Schoolhouse, with materials written and animated by me, and illustrated by award-winning cartoonist David Trumbull, there's the two of us, reaching 240,000 children in Africa and South America, and expanding globally to reach the millions of illiterate children at home and in the developing world. I find that if we put the printed word in front of children who do not have strong language skills, they may have a hard time with it. But film and cartoons? They break down or deconstruct and teach without us really feeling the medicine go down. The stars of the animated fil uh, film curricula 
are funny, lovable creatures, Hattie and Finn. What do you mean, creature? I'm nobody's creature. It is I, Phineas F. Fox, the star of Alex Animated Schoolhouse. A ridiculous name, if you ask me. Finny, nobody asked you. We tend to think that one size fits all in our educational system. But the truth is that for every student who learns something the traditional way, there are two who learn it differently. Let's take Finney, for example. Here is a short clip about the most basic math. Math is so visual, it helps to see examples of what you're counting. So let's count apples. Counting one, two, three. Hey, give me back that apple, Finney. That's for counting, not for snacking. Basic math, right? But Finney doesn't get it until he sees it. Then, of course, he eats it. We understood this need to see things through cartoons, animal drawings, comics, comic videos when we were in nursery school and kindergarten. And so did our teachers and administrators. We didn't just hear about numbers or see numbers on a textbook page or write numbers. We colored them, we cut them out, we built them. We sang about them. Two apples and two coconuts, two ripe banana and number two is The ones we know numbers, you'll see we can count anything. Birds in the sky, fox on the ground. Once we know numbers, you'll see nothing is hard to learn. Counting is where it's at now. Then it ends. But there are children who continue to learn best through parts. The auditory, the visual, the tactile. The ones who need those other tools in order to get that equation, grasp the moral, infer from an experiment. And we, as educational innovators and creative deconstructors, need to provide those tools to help kids become. Teach them the parts. They'll create the whole. Now, is it worth all the effort? You bet. Let me tell you, Finney and his classmates are quite charming once they've made it off the drawing board. However, while they're in production, they're a handful. Is it tea time yet? Oh, I had it. <laughs> the individual efforts involved in deconstructing a traditional learning model, like a textbook lesson or a workbook, to produce an entirely new and creative educational piece can be tedious. There's the drafting, storyboarding, animating, and editing. Nonetheless, I am just as excited about the process of their becoming as I am to see the finished product. I keep in mind the story of the reporter who asked three workmen on a construction site what they're doing. The first man says, I'm digging a trench. The second man says, I'm moving a pile of bricks. The third man says, I'm building a cathedral. Alex Animated Schoolhouse is my unfinished cathedral. It's an attempt to create solutions, my pathway to becoming. Now, you can't create solutions out of thin air. You have to join a conversation that's already in progress. I just happened on such a conversation when I attended a Lincoln Center benefit for Africa. I met clergy educators and saw footage depicting the unacceptably dire state of education in their poorest villages. And I wanted to use my talents to help. But at first, I wasn't sure how my skills could benefit the lives of millions of disenfranchised kids. And then a light went on. I remembered a quote that I really loved by Elie Wiesel. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. I wouldn't be silent. <laughs>
Finney, Trumbull and I love you just as much as we love Hattie. Then why does she get the English accent? Finney, I'm in the middle of a TEDx. We'll talk later, all right? As you can see, I wouldn't be silent, and neither would my characters. I would use my voice as a storyteller and a filmmaker to try and create a paradigm shift in developing nation education through film and educational comic books, breaking down math and science, hygiene and social issues into accessible bite-sized pieces. After a few months of teaching with our materials in Ghana, letters streamed in from the children written in crayons from every color of the rainbow. Dear Alec, I like science now with your fun videos. Maybe I will grow up to be a nurse and help my village. Thank you so much, my friend. Bless you too. Angela. How can I explain how gratifying Angela's letter and all the others were to me? It was heartening to know that the film and comic book curricula that had been hours and years in production were now motivating and educating thousands of children. We were making a difference. Now, Alex Animated Schoolhouse is replicating its successful model. We are free sourcing our curriculum and methodologies to schools and organizations around the world. And in this way, we intend to reach every vulnerable child marginalized because of the learning divide. These little ones, they will become the teachers, the social entrepreneurs, the nurses and physicians, the ones who will lead their villages into a brighter future. So what's the takeaway? Although it's comfortable working with the model we know, if we hesitate to build the new, we stop thinking big, and then we stop becoming. So we as students, we need to identify the pressing social issues on which we can have an impact. Don't be afraid that somebody has already done it or that somebody could do it better. Your talent is unique. Your talent is special. So write a song, do a documentary, a video for YouTube. Translate a lesson from your favorite subject into a language you know. Imagine the impact, the boundless leverage available to us, the elasticity of creation. Once we begin to deconstruct traditional education and become builders of dreams, innovators of learning. Now, it's always valuable to take apart constructs for the sheer purpose of understanding. But the true potential of deconstruction is so much greater, because hidden within that process lies life-changing and life-saving value. The ability to reassemble a new, never-before-seen solution from those very basic parts. There's a company called Inintech that developed a radical solution to toxic waste disposal. They have a machine like that, and they superheat plasma to the point where it can molecularly disassociate toxic waste and create just hydrogen, carbon, metals, zero pollution. It's deconstruction on a grand scale. Incredible. And we can't forget the life-saving use that was discovered when somebody deconstructed the design for origami. That design is now used to create the balloon effect that opens restricted blood flow in the heart. So let us, as educators and writers and artists, be the guys who throw away the map and use every sense available to humankind to create unique approaches to the traditional foundations of early learning. Whoever saves a life, it is considered as if he saved an entire world. To be that person. Today, I have the honor of being on stage for my first TEDx presentation. Finney and Hattie and all their classmates have joined me. And up on the screen are three lines written in crayon from every color of the rainbow. I want to be just like Finney only smarter, Ronald. We laugh, we learn, and now I can do anything, Thema. Keep sending the pretty, funny lessons. Don't forget us, Jojo. Now, I'm not sure where all of this is taking me, 
but I do know that the kids and I are on this global adventure together. And I'm not okay with letting them down. You see, Zadie, I'm still becoming.